<clears throat> well, that'll put a hop in your get along and a hitch in your get along. <clears throat> Something. Anyway. Well, hello. Welcome back, Open Pagan Church. Let me bring up Discord over here. Hello, Discord. Hello, good morning. Couldn't get everybody to shut up while ago and nobody wants to talk now. <laughs> good morning. Sorry, Jake was talking to me. Ah, well, okay. Well, let me tell you. These last two weeks have been a bitch. And, yeah, we're a family channel, but I'm just going to say it like it is. Um, I felt like crap last week. Um, nope. Don't got CB19. Just felt crap. I think it's all going around. <sighs> well, let's start with I hope everyone is um, being as safe as they possibly can during these trying times. And um, <clears throat> boy, if you upload to any social media whatsoever, they don't want you to even use the word of what's going around. Hmm censorship much? Hmm. Figure. Anyway, onward and upward. I think I saw Sabrina in chat. She may have buggered off. Either that or she's doing homework. I don't miss homework. I don't miss school. Right. Using stones in different paths. Well, before we carry off into the wild blue yonder about using stones in different paths, uh, what I'm kind of concentrating on is people that people that come in or are coming in or thinking about or researching the pagan philosophies. You you read all of these books. And everybody says, go read a book. Now, me, okay, books are great. Uh, they're great for a bit of education, right? How, how do other people uh, do it? What do they use? How does it work? But books may not always align with the way you do things or the way uh, you see things should be done. So, using stones in different paths, this kind of go goes along with um, most... Uh, let me get rid of that red tint. It looks like you got a sunburn. <laughs> ah, that's better. Why? Lighting was bad. It looked like I, yeah, got a sunburn. Um, hadn't really been outside at all much. So, using stones, um, most people, most people use stones of one form or fashion, whether they realize it or not. Um, what are some of the ways uh, you use them? What are some of the stones that you might use performing different things? And one of the other things we're going to talk about is regardless of whether it's stones on an altar, uh, stones for ritual, stones in a circle, um, stones to build a fire pit, right? Um, we're not going to talk about getting stoned. That's, that's a personal thing. <laughs> So, I know stones in my path, and I, I clump in uh, crystals and what some would refer rock as stones. 
I know there's some kind of scientific variation between a rock and a stone and a crystal and a gem. I'm not going to get into all of that. Oh, no. I'm just talking about stones. Stones um, of all kinds. Go for it. Yeah, stones. I mean, we use all kinds of different types. I mean, I use rose quartz. Uh, what else? E, tiger's eye. I use all, you know, different types. Emeralds. But it's how you use it. Um, like we do stones for the circle. Uh, I have stones adore, um, I have clear quartz above my doorways coming into my house. Something different. We have uh, stones we use for property boundaries. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I have the same uh, some boundaries. Uh, I use some crystals around the door frame and around the patio and stuff for protection. And then uh, I have all of my stones that I use when I'm doing the healing and stuff. I know something. Clint, Clint has pocket stones. Yeah, he has I do too. Bag that carries with them. Yeah, we carry. Yeah, got a I little... have a river rock that I like to keep in my pocket because. It's like a worry stone. It mm -hmm. helps me calm down, if that makes sense. It does, absolutely. Um, we, when I was, <clears throat> when I was growing up, mother always called them a thumb rock. A thumb rock. It was a, a rock, a small rock that fit in the palm of your hand, and you just run your thumb over it, and sometimes you kept it in your pocket, and you walked around playing with your pocket rocks all day. Yeah, mine's a little bigger. It's like the size of your palm. <laughs> wow. It feels nice. Wow. She likes them big. She likes them big. Oh, shut up. Uh, public. Never mind. Family channel. Family channel. Family channel. Family channel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have two that I carry with me all the time, no matter what. One is a Madagascar rose quartz that Jessica Ooh. got me over there in Britain. And pretty. then I have a Lampadite one now. Yeah, those are pretty. So. That, that should be interesting. Sabrina sent me some from Emily. Yeah. Uh, as soon as they can get out of the house. How is, uh, how, how, without using any, uh, banned words on social media, how's she doing? Um, her and husband are locked down on the base. Uh, no in and out unless necessity. I mean, really necessity. Because they have commissary and everything on the base, so they shouldn't have to get off. Yeah, so they're on the military base. They're cool, then. Yep, there's only been two cases there. All right. Yeah, so, um, that actually brings up a good point. Can stones? Uh, I'm, I got to word this question very carefully. Can stones help with illnesses? Oh yes. Okay. I'm not going to be one to say stones will cure illnesses. Um. I've got a couple of stones that I use when I get a sinus infection that helps. Um, I've got, you know, like like a lot of other people, I've got a couple of pocket rocks that I carry with me. Um, I've got a little bag that I carry in my man bag that uh, has my favorite stones in it along with my pentagram and a couple of other things that I carry kind of a, I don't know, I guess you could call it an altar in a bag without a candle, but then you don't have to have a candle to have an altar, that's another topic. Ouch. So, let's talk about stones for sacred space. Now, I know in my path, we don't combine uh, 
cardinal points and elementals. They're separate. They form our council of nine, if you will. So we generally have a, a stone on each of the nine points of our sacred space. And when I say, what about you? I'm talking about those people that may uh, be watching our broadcast pre-recorded. Talk about how you use your stones. And I'm going to make an invite, right, to any other practitioners that may watch our broadcast on YouTube or other social networks that we upload to. Um, feel free if you want to do a short video on what you use your stones for and put them in the reply section on YouTube. I see that a lot. So we'll make that little invite real quick. Well, when I was in the other side, I guess the witchcraft side, I know one of the stones I still have and I still use is a cellulite. It's, it's a tool for conducting and getting your energies out better, but we also use the moonstone for stabilizing. Uh, moonstones are beautiful. I can't remember if that's pronounced, I think it's pronounced cellulite. C cellulite? Yeah. yeah, cellulite. Yeah. Not cellulitis, that shit hurts. Yeah, no, the cellulite, it, most of us use a wand on it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, I have a cellulite wand well <laughs> I have someone gave me cellulite pieces they're like four to six inches long and <laughs> other day I was like really unbalanced and everything so I have about I have nine pieces so I went outside and made a circle with nine points and boy howdy did I get charged up well yeah I mean uh, you know that that's one of the really nice things about cellulite. Is it cellulite or cellulite? Cellulite. Really? Hmm. Selenite. Spelled with an S. S uh, what? Yes, Lucy, it is. <laughs> um, looks like... Hey, um, Debbie's joined yeah, us. Yay, looks like, uh, looks hey, like Deb. Debbie joined us, yep. Um, now, that, um, and depending on your geographical location, this also is something that I kind of wanted to talk about on this topic, using stones, right? Right. Uh, depending on your geographic location, uh, somebody's posting his open pagan church. Plant switch. So, there are a lot of indigenous people of different cultures that use different indigenous stones in their circles and for their different types of healing uh, and what have you. Uh, let's see. Selenite, boy, was I pronouncing it wrong. It's uh, it's a crystal. It's selenite. Uh, Debbie says it's a fatty deposit. Boy, have I got a lot of that. <laughs> yep. Hi, right, good morning, Dave. Nice. I know, I know. Uh, we're talking about books. There's a book out there by Judy Hall. It's called the Crystal Bible. I've seen that, and it, it is a really good book. I I do. I, it's like I opened up the broadcast with, though. I do want to caution people on because on thinking that because one book says use this crystal for this or that stone for that. I do want to caution people that that doesn't mean another stone or another type of stone would not work better for you. 
Right. And I've had people just almost get into an argument with me over only one stone can do one thing. Well, no. A shaman can use stone for anything we can make it useful or it will let us use it for. Yep, you know. Um, Dave says Herkimer is his favorite. Yep, I have to, uh, like one of our last broadcasts, I have to completely agree with Dave. I love my Herkimers. I've um, got one. I want more. Debbie says selenite is a very specific type of fatty deposit. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. <laughs> hmm. My, uh, my fatty deposit is equal opportunity. It's everywhere. Anyway, I digress. So, uh, let's think, let's talk about, uh, sacred space, right? When you're using different stones to form sacred space. Now, sacred space, contrary to uh, some common belief, sacred space does not have to be a circle. Now, most pagan philosophies go with uh, a circle because it is it resembles the circle of life. Right? It resembles so <laughs> cellulitis. Yeah, I've got a little bit of that too. Um, the circle resembles the symbol of life. Now, in a number of ancient philosophies, the swirl, right? It started just a just a point, and yeah, right, cellulitis is a fatty deposit. Yeah, um, it. it started just as a circle, a point, and then as it swirled out, it got a lot bigger. So, there are a number of people that use the uh, swirl, if you will, set in stones, and then they would fill in the areas of the swirl with different types of stones. And then, the outer ridge, sometimes it's square, rectangle, triangle, hexagonal, who cares? Um, they'll set their sacred space in that. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, I, I get it. I was being a smart ass between cellulite and cellulitis. <coughs> It's a damn shame um, selenite will not cure or heal cellulitis. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? Use it to calm. I've used it to calm it down. I've seen that. Yep. Um, other minerals, and I'm going to call them minerals. Um, other minerals that are good in sacred space and the use of different forms of divination, meditation, relaxation, um, are your rare earth metals. What they what they coined the phrase rare, rare earth metals. And uh, Dave says I grew up being a smart ass. Yeah, so did I. So stones in sacred space are very important. Marker stones, uh, like uh, Cindy was saying earlier, um, she puts stones around the circle, or around the circle, shit, around the property. And I do the same. Um, when I move on to a new piece of property, as a part of my placing of the guardians and the watchtowers, I will take a particular crystal and go around to the different points of the property um, at the property line 
and just shove them into the ground with a blessing in the, pla the placement of uh, guardians and watchtowers. <laughs> the stones I used were from Liberty. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. No. Nope. Um, I've got a box of small crystal terminate. Um, most of them are clear quartz for the most part. And those are what I use. And I've been asked, well, don't you dig them up when you move? No, I don't. I do pull down the guardians and watchtowers, uh, thank them for their service and send them on. But once, to me, all right, to me, once the stones have been put in the land and they become a part of the land, then I leave them. I mean, who knows? Some years later, if somebody accidentally digs one up, it'd be a good conversation piece. <laughs> <coughs> so, what, what are some of the ways that you guys might use stones in your everyday life. And I mean, if you need me to clarify that question, let me know, because um, I know that quartz, right? Uh, quartz has been used in radios, shortwave radios, AM, FM radios for years and years and years. Um, they've been used to boost radio signals, quartz of many different types of quartz have been used in different types of radiological, um, ra radiological devices, I think I said that right. I've known people that have a specific crystal. Now, I'm going to say this. This is kind of like the instructions of remove baby from baby carriage before folding. But <laughs> do not ground up quartz crystal and drink it. <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta ask up. Why would you do that? Uh oh, she's echoing. Why would you fold a baby up in a baby carriage without removing baby first? Now, I know some people that put quartz in their water, mm -hmm. but then strain it out because it gives them energized water in their release. Mm hmm. Um, quartz crystal in water does change the molecular uh, the, mole the molecular structure I guess is the term I'm looking for of water and other drinks but I'm not talking about ground crystal um, I'm talking about crystal shards yeah I've seen people swallow them. I don't know why. I mean, wouldn't that mess up your innards? Yeah, it would cut them up. Okay, I'm no doctor at all, but that I do understand the digestive tract and the way it works and, and, and ow. New, new meaning to uh, roughage, right? Right. Ouch. Yeah, I've done something. I've had a hot tub. It's an inflatable one, but I have a hot tub. One of the they gave me some ideas. I was not feeling good and everything. I've got some of my rose quartz and moonstones and onyx. Yeah. And put them in a bag where they wouldn't float around all the place. And I've dropped them in there. I've left them in there because they help the water and, and me. Yeah. Yeah, and you know where where I was going with that silly statement earlier. Um, I've seen 
people have a specific stone of a sort, whether it's quartz or river rock or whatever, that they keep in their coffee pot. Um, one person I knew some years ago had never washed their coffee pot. They rinse it out. But the, the stone that's in there, it, it, it was, you know, nice sized crystal, clear quartz crystal shard, uh, had been in there for years. And they never took it out for any reason. They made the coffee and the crystal was in the coffee. Interesting. I, I found it interesting that there were no coffee stains on the glass of the coffee pot. I mean, hey, whatever works. But this, this goes to show, folks, that stones are a part of everyday life. Um, take pumice, for example. Pumice is a byproduct of a volcanic eruption. Pumice has been used for thousands of years as an exfoliant. Uh, pumice was even used for thousands of years as a sandpaper. Um, back in the day when I was a mechanic, our gojo, our hand cleaner, had ground up pumice in it. You could feel it and it would help remove the grease and grime and what have you. And you may see cleaners with pumice in it. Uh, I absolutely don't recommend you try to use a pumice cleaner on glass. Well, you want to talk about scratching the hell out of some glass. So there are millions of applications that day to day what uh, non-pagan uh, non-pagan folk use on a daily basis that has stones of one form or another in them. So here's a question and I've never googled it and it's just kind of it's been one of those nagging curiosities that um, you know you have sometimes it's just really not worth looking up as it were. Is salt a stone? Yes and no. Explain your opinion. Salt is in everything, pretty much. It doesn't matter what it is. So it is considered a stone, and it's a hardener. But when you put it in water, it dissolves into the water form, so it's really not considered a stone then. And salt, uh, if you don't have salt uh, in, your in your system, the potassium and your body breaks down. Right. I've studied that as well. So, and one of the uh, one of the tricks we did when I was in science in school was we did we dissolved a tablespoon of salt into hot water, and then used a paper clip and dropped cotton string down into the water, and let it set overnight. And when we come in the next morning, the salt crystals had formed on the cotton string. Well, it comes from a mineral, so is it a stone? Say again? It comes from minerals, so can it be a stone? The salt. Well, there, therein lies, I think, it's a bit of semantics. Um, Minerals 
are a stone, aren't they? By definition, without splitting the atom and getting all scientific with it, um, a hardened mineral is a stone. Petrified wood is a stone. What about Himalaya salt? Salt, Himal whether it's whether it's Himalaya river, um, whatever uh, salt is salt. Uh, yeah, there's some uh, chemical differences in it, and you know what have you. But see, here's where here's where you can get yourself wound up in a um, you can get yourself wound up in one of those rabbit holes, right? Where you start wondering what is actually a stone. Um, excuse me, just a second. Yeah. I'm still not back up where I should be, but um, this too shall pass. Let's see. Debbie says salt is laid down in layers due to ancient evaporation. Yes, of water. But crystalline structure. So, um, that's kind of what I was waiting on, was the term crystal, crystalline structure. Now, we use crystals, right? The biggest thing today, I don't know how many people have seen them, but the, the biggest thing today is, is taking a salt stone, boring a hole in it, putting a light bulb in it, and when it heat, when the light bulb heats up, the uh, the crisp, the uh, salt stone, if you will, it helps purify the room. Um, Debbie says a stone generally is a solid form of chemical compound. Right, agreed. And you know that that's kind of where I was going. You know, with when when we talk about stones, I'm kind of including crystals. You know, crystals are built up, right? Um, river rock is different from salt stone. I'm sorry, not uh, sandstone. I, you know, I get that, scientifically speaking. But it's it's still for our our uses, if you will. But we consider it a stone. Um, I personally like the energy of salt rock on an altar. Um, I like the energy of salt stone, if you will, on an altar. It's really kind of cool. Um, right. And I'll let you guys read what Debbie put in down here. Um, for anybody that really doesn't know, um, I, I love Debbie's input on this stuff because she studied, um, you know, in Scotland, she has studied the uh, geological artifacts and the geographical areas around and what makes what, right? And there's an actual name for the scientific study. Um, and I'm all for it. You know, me, I'm all fine calling a crystal a stone, uh, calling a salt rock a stone. Uh, to me, a stone is something hard. Y'all leave that alone. 
I can sort of agree. I'll read what they've just put. Especially if the compound has been through a geological system as it lay down on the ground or compounded over time. Right. But the case, the fact of the matter is, and here's the question. Would humans survive without all of the stones and compounds and uh, the, the different things that make us up, we know we would not survive without salt or sodium. Uh, right. Geology studied for her degree. Right, that's it. Um, would humans survive without stones? I mean, I know the Earth wouldn't exist because the Earth is one great big huge rock, right? Um, third rock from the sun, so to speak. No pun intended. But would humans survive without stones? Not really, because stones actually started the weapon age, but it was always used uh, for medicinal and spiritual reasons, but even before that. Right. Uh, the medicinal side, absolutely. I'm going more down to the existence of our biological being. Um, you know, like Debbie said, our bio biological systems requires uh, small amounts or trace amounts of most elements. So, the simple answer is no. And here's something I had a little fun with. Um, in short, no, right. Something I had a little fun with at one of the... Uh, seminars that I gave, one of the workshops. It, stones don't have a religion. Stones don't have a preference. Stones may have a preferential energy to a particular individual or a particular individual that may use that particular stone for now. Stones come and go. Almost knocked my rabbit over. Whoops. Whoops. Um, stones come and go. You may, you may have a stone or a crystal that you've loved for years and all of a sudden it's migrated off to someone or something else. So stones come and go. The use of a stone may vary from person to person. Craft to craft, if you will. Path to path. You'll have one person in one path that may use um, what? Rose quartz, right? We'll, we'll pick on rose quartz. You have one person in one path that may use rose quartz as a heart stone. You may have another person in another path that may use rose quartz as a third eye cleanser. You may have another person uh, the same path that may also use the rose quartz as a third eye cleanser also as just a worry stone, right? A uh, pocket rock, so to speak. And that kind of leads me to
to a funny I, I don't know if other countries had this anomaly but in the 70s and it lasted until the 80s some guy somewhere came up with the idea of a pet rock Anybody in America remember the pet rock? Oh, yep, yes. and he made millions. He did. Yep. And they're still out there. I still have mine. You can still find You still got one? Yes, I do. Wow. I don't remember what happened to mine. Pet rock came in a oh <laughs> there's, there's a group I'm with called Let's Rock on Facebook the ladies or whoever's in it and men who also we will get rocks and paint funny things on them and set them out for people to look at even the stores have them yep. yep that was a thing for a long time in the last two years they would find rocks and paint them and find it for other people to find yeah uh, yeah that's a big thing now um, there was a there, there's one of these uh, uh, video series that I'm on on Facebook it's like um, top 10 oddest finds or uh, top 10 things you would not expect to find on a beach I think was the last one and <clears throat> there was these folk I don't remember where the hell they were at, but this in, this entire beach line, people have started painting uh, sayings on rocks, putting them in the beach. Um, Debbie had a pet rock uh, in the 70s. Um, let's see. Um, ah, she found hers on the on the beach in, in Kent. Yeah. Um, Pet rocks were a multi-billion dollar business. People can say what they want to about rocks, stones, crystals, whatever, stones. Human beings are drawn to stones. And again, my apologies. Anyway, if I thought it would do any good, I'd soak my head in crystal. <laughs> that won't help you, old man. Ah, uh, probably not. Probably not. So, on a on a fun side, right? On on the fun side, stones, crystals, rocks whatever you call them uh, rare earth stones uh, whatever you rare earth minerals okay whatever you call them true diamonds Herkimer diamonds clear quartz rose quartz tiger's eye smoky quartz quartzy quartz uh, whatever you call it uh, strontianite stone uh, strontianite quartz is a, is a beautiful little stone. Um, yeah, you know, it's like, like Dave said. We gravitate to stones and stones gravitate to us. Um, my desk, when I worked in Dallas, uh, I had a stone on that desk. It, bless its heart, it's still in a box behind the green screen back here. But... I usually keep a stone of one kind or another on my desk. But how, and I mean, I, I want to finish, you know, kind of kind of start uh, wag waggling down, if you will. 
But the whole point to the whole thing is real simple. Human beings are, are attracted to stones of all types. Uh, whether, you know, the, the old adage of diamonds are a girl's best friend, you know, um, gold, crystal. I know gold is a metal, but that's besides the point. When, when you are attracted to or something is attracted to you, right? Then, what difference does it make what book says how it's used? Read books. Definitely read books. Get an idea from the books that you read. And if you have a stone that really means something to you, and you want to learn more about it, <coughs> figure out what kind of stone it is. Uh, if you don't know yourself and you can't find out, um, take it to somebody who studies geology. Somebody that studies rocks and stones. They can look at it most of the time and tell you exactly what it is. Then you can bugger off and start Googling where it comes from, how it's formed, right? Um, and what most people use it for. Kind of give you some ideas of why or how it works the way it does for you. I will say this. The only wrong way to use a stone is to hit somebody with it. Or to drink it. Swallow it. Um, stones are designed for external use only. <laughs> Um, wanted to make sure I put that in there. But the only wrong way to use a stone is to try to hurt somebody else with it. That ought to pretty well um, solidify everything you would use a stone for. And all, all of the religions on the planet. Every religion on the planet in some way, shape, form, or fashion has a stone or stones that they use in one way or another. You may not get them to admit it, but they do. There have been multiple times I've seen Christians carry a uh, worry rock. I've seen them with stones sitting around their house because they love them and they don't know why. And that's okay. Same thing with uh, Muslim, Jewish, atheist, agnostic, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So if you're attracted to a stone, I'm not going to get into the whole uh, permission of can I take you home. That's that's a me thing. If I'm on a beach and I see a stone that I absolutely love, I'll pick it up, I'll pet it, and I'll say, can I take you home? Uh, if I get this kick in my hand, um, right, well, I admire you and I put you down. But that's a me thing. If you've... Um, you know, if you've ever stood on a crystalline, crystalline beach, a beach with crystal all over it, the hum can be deafening. So, yeah, I mean, all religions throughout the world have used stones in one shape, form, or fashion. We would not have, we would not have the electronics of today were it not for stones. You wouldn't have computers were it not for stones. And if you don't believe me, look up what a CPU chip is made of. Right. So, okay. Well, that being said, we're going to bugger off and get ready for Live with the Shaman. That comes up at 11 a.m. Central Time over on hashtag Live with the Shaman. 
and um, really take care of yourself out there folks um, practice your social distancing communicate via uh, FaceTime face chat whatever Facebook live YouTube live whatever take care of you be safe be kind and check up on your neighbors just see if they're okay have a good one we'll see you next time here on open pagan church